Tidal variation is a natural phenomenon occurring monthly and seasonally due to the gravitational pull of the sun and moon on the Earth, as well as the rotation of the Earth around its axis. The highest monthly tides occur during the new and full moon phases, and that's when the sun, moon, and Earth are aligned. King tides are the highest tides of the year that occur seasonally during the months surrounding the summer and winter solstices during those new and full moon phases. And that's when the axis of the Earth is at an angle that offers the greatest gravitational pull from the sun. The winter king tides occur during the daylight hours and they also offer us a greater opportunity to witness the hazardous storm events that are exacerbated by high waters. And in this way, king tides allow us to see the immediate impacts of sea level rise that we're currently experiencing. So one of the reasons why we um, want people to go out and film the king tides during the winter months is because the highest high tide of the year may not necessarily be that much higher than other tides of the year, but when they're combined with the big storm surges, so when the wind is pushing water back up on our coastline, that can make for some really exciting high water that helps us do the visualization where we can actually get a glimpse of what these high tides are today, so what might happen just once or twice a year now, that will be the average tide of the future. King's Tide Initiative is very important to us, and it's very important because uh, we're charged through the Ocean Protection Council and different agencies of the Resources Agency with trying to educate the public and be ready for the impacts of sea level rise. We just have many people and many public infrastructure resources uh, that are attuned to the current sea level, while the sea level may be changing. And it is not just uh, as I'm fond of saying, like a bathtub filling up. It's like the two-year-old cannonballing into the bathtub. Since its inception, the California King Tides Initiative has evolved to include not just education and outreach goals, but to actually use these photos however they can be used by the general public researchers and decision makers and policy makers. So our audience has grown and experiencing more participation every year. Images are used by planners and coastal managers to figure out what right now is at risk of flooding. Their images are also used by scientists and researchers to validate flood models. So we have models that tell us where water will be, but that model is just, it's math. It's math and computers, and we need something to prove that that will actually be happening. And so these images help us look at whether or not that model is able to predict what we can actually see every year during these king tide events. So for the, the researchers and the modelers, they need a really intensive and extensive data set. So it benefits them if they have lots of pictures at the high tide mark of a specific area. We can do so many great things with GIS now. Maps are so powerful, but at the end of the day, sometimes you, some people just don't get it with maps and maps are hard to understand. And so that's where the images themselves are really helpful as a way to back up what that map is saying because a map looks often really flat and it doesn't make you think about where water is going to be in your community. One of the great ironies of doing sea level rise work is that we were considering the science on sea level rise at the Ocean Protection Council at a meeting in Sacramento that began at 9 one morning a few years ago and at 8 that morning the tsunami from Japan hit the California coast and there were two particular places that took a really big hit and one of them was in my home city of Santa Cruz where the harbor uh, took a big wave and a complete dock and a whole series of boats were sunk. Uh, there were great videos of showing exactly how the wave came in. And that was at low tide before there's appreciable sea level rise that we project. So when you imagine an extreme event like that hits in 30 or 40 years and hits at high tide and hits after there might be 7 or 10 inches of sea level rise, it will be a totally different experience. California managers are actively pursuing sea level rise adaptation strategies because we have a lot of really important and expensive infrastructure access points at risk and we'll need some sort of plan to deal with sea level rise. A good king tide photograph has an image of 
some sort of infrastructure on our coastline that is threatened by sea level rise, maybe inundated during certain times or threatened during hazardous storm events that are exacerbated by these high tides. But what we really need from the person submitting the photo is your location and when you took the photo. And uploading those photos to our Flickr site with that information is really important to us. And as much information as you can give us is great. In addition to infrastructure, photos of infrastructure, so bridges, roads, houses, other buildings that are at risk, it's also valuable to see um, what those potential human impacts are. So there are places where we go to play. There are hiking trails all along the bay, and when those get wet, we probably should know about that too. I mean, this is something that's happening to you in your local community, and it's happening to a couple billion people in their local communities in many, many parts of the world. And there aren't very many opportunities for us to feel connected to something that is so personal and so local, and then to realize that that, that phenomenon is happening to billions of people.